The miniature community must all be members of Duran Duran because everyone seems to be hungry like the wolf when it comes to the new 10th edition 40k box set. But don't come undone while waiting for 10th edition to drop. There's things we can do in the meantime to prepare. Let's take a break from this ordinary world and discuss how to plan your next paint scheme for your upcoming army. I've always thought Tyranids are cool and no time like the present for me to figure out my own scheme for these girls on film. Jumping into a new painting project is a recipe for disaster, which I can attest to firsthand based on the results of my Night Lords video you can see here. And with 10th edition 40k right around the corner, it means that many of us are going to be starting a new army or picking up one on the shelf that we neglected long ago. And for that, we're going to need a new paint scheme. So let's jump right into the process I think is best for developing a new paint scheme before you undertake an entire army. And we'll be doing so on these bugs for my new Tyranid Force. All right, the first thing I do when planning out a paint scheme is find inspiration. And this is true whether I'm painting a single model or an entire force. And oftentimes the model itself is all the inspiration we need. Just looking at it gives us an idea of the main color we want to use or how we can envision how we could paint it different than everybody else. But it's also great to find inspiration in other places, especially when you're going to have to use this scheme over a lot of models so they all have a cohesive look. I don't know about you, but I've never been a fan of this silly purple and white color scheme for Tyranids, and I know that there's all sorts of lore out there for different sub-factions that we could choose to paint our models in, but I have way more fun searching up gnarly-looking insects and Xeno-style alien colors from movies, comic books, and all sorts of weird results from internet searches. I find a great time to think up color schemes and to do a little bit of internet research is while I'm building models and I'm doing their bases. Physically holding the minis can often spark ideas and the basing choices you make can help you envision what environment they're in and how their colors would be influenced by that world. I'm using some craggy rocks from Epic Basing that I printed, as well as some other weird things. I decided I want there to be an egg nest here on the base, so I just put down a few ball bearings and sprinkled a whole bunch of these super tiny glass beads I got on Amazon, which are great for all sorts of things. They work particularly good to use as two scale bubbles for any kind of water effects. I'll put a link to these as well as the rest of the stuff I'm using in today's video should you want to pick them up yourself and support the channel in the process. In my eyes, the most important thing you get out of doing a test model for a new paint scheme is figuring out what effects really work and which ones don't. This might mean that you find a certain color or step doesn't fit with your idea so you can scrap it now before you're fully invested in doing it on another 50 models. You'll almost certainly walk away from this test with some changes to your final scheme, but whether you do or you don't, you'll move on to the full army with two very important things. First, confidence in what the final model will look like, and second, the understanding how to break down each step and replicate it across the army. Also, by doing this start to finish, you'll be able to just buckle down and do each step by step instead of sitting there and overanalyzing what to do next. Nothing in my experience makes the painting project take longer than overanalyzing instead of just painting. The overall vision I came up with for this paint scheme is fairly straightforward. I wanted to contrast that shiny black carapace that's so iconic from the Aliens movies with a very pale, almost unsettling look of flesh that we see in grubs and maggots. And from the get-go, I have confidence in this scheme because it gives us a great contrast right away. We have very dark, hard, and shiny next to pale, sickly, and mushy. Mm. Why am I hungry all of a sudden? I'm using an airbrush here to speed up the process, and in every damn video that I use an airbrush, I get people in the comments complaining about it. I'm sorry that I'm using a tool that was designed for and is very efficient at a certain set of tasks. Oh, I even have a video on a super cheap entry-level do-it-all-in-one airbrush kit that you can see up there in the corner, and yes, a year later, still works like a charm. When working on a project that's going to eventually include a lot of models, I want my workflow to go from big to small, meaning I'm going to paint the main color of each model first, and then I'm going to go on to the messy work, which in this case is painting those big sections of flesh with this tint. I don't care at all about being neat and tidy. As we work into smaller and smaller areas and details, we will paint over those areas anyway, so don't waste any time trying to be perfect. 
I had considered putting on some form of pattern on the wings here like you see on insects in the wild. And while I didn't do it now, I may decide once this model is all completed that it would look better with that and I can put that step in for the full army. The reason I decided not to add it was I just didn't want too many layers of detail on this test model. I find that one of the big mistakes we often make in our attempts to make armies look amazing is overdoing it on the details. Especially at a distance, too many details can just make the model look too busy and hard to read. I'd rather do a couple of really interesting details on a paint scheme than do a bunch and have them all fight with each other and just make me go cross-eyed whenever I look at it to even know what it's supposed to be. I often find that in painting a color scheme for the first time, I'm not sure what to do after I've established my initial main colors. And by and large, there really isn't anywhere you can go wrong here as long as it's the next larger thing to do. And by doing it, you're not going to have to paint over it again later. It's also not a bad idea to write some notes to yourself on the order of each of the steps on this test model. You may find that you'll realize that doing step four earlier will be much more efficient. So you'll be able to make that note and you'll have created your very own step-by-step -step that's most efficient when you get to the full army. We spend so much time and energy coming up with the backstory, motivation, and traits for all the characters we play in games, but then we just end up using some generic mini that everybody else uses at the table? But not anymore. Eldritch Foundry is the web-based character creator that allows you to design and order the most custom miniatures you could possibly imagine. This thing is seriously like a video game character creator on steroids. And you get to choose between purchasing the STL so you can print it at home or have them send you the physical mini printed on their 30 micron printers, which is two to three times sharper than anyone else. They also have a monthly subscription program called Eldritch Unlimited where you can create as many STL files as your little heart desires every single month. And it's so affordable that it pays for itself in just two to three models. And if all that wasn't enough, they're giving you, the loyal Ninjon subscribers, a bonus discount. Just use the link you see on screen as well as down in the video description to get the best possible pricing so you can bring to life the characters you spend so much time with on the tabletop. At this point in the paint scheme, I couldn't decide if I should paint all the carapace black or I should wait and do that after I've done a wash over the entire model. But instead of just sitting there staring at the model, undoubtedly never having any kind of aha moment, I decided I'm gonna think it through while I paint the base. When I do things like this, I always feel like I'm being efficient with my time, as well as giving myself more data points to help me with future decision making on the model. Besides, the base is going to need painting sooner or later anyway, and I know I'm going to use the same wash over it as the rest of the model, so I might as well knock it out and come to that decision about the black carapace. I decided to wait to paint the black carapace until after I'm done with the wash, and for that wash, I'm going to use one of my favorite products to make something grimy, nasty, and properly grimdark, and that's AK Interactive Streaking Grime. You can apply this stuff with an airbrush or a regular brush. Just make sure you thin it down a bit with mineral spirits if you're going to do it with a brush, because otherwise it can go on quite thick. I found that this stuff has the most impact over really light, bright colors to really give us that impactful, dirty look. These bugs should make your skin crawl when you're looking at them, and this is such an easy way to get that effect. Once you've put it on and let it dry just a little bit, you can buff it off with a makeup sponge and you can get those cheap in bulk on Amazon. I just put a little tiny amount of mineral spirits on my sponge if I want to remove all of the enamel wash on those raised brightest areas. Now it's time for us to make a big impact in a very dark way. And that means putting on that black paint all over the carapace. I got to admit, this step made me a little bit nervous because, quite frankly, when you're making such massive changes with one coat of paint, it feels like you could screw it up and it's all going to look like ass at any moment. But when you get those feelings in your gut, those, oh, I'm going to screw this all up feelings, do not run away from them. Without taking a few risks, you're never going to grow and you're never going to have the coolest final product you could have. And that's the whole reason we do a test scheme. So I can make these mistakes now and figure out what works and what doesn't. So when you paint your bugs, they're going to look a lot cooler than my bug. And with that black, we've officially completed all the major elements of this paint scheme. Now, granted, I haven't put the gloss varnish over the black yet, but other than that, 
we're technically done, but we're not going to stop there. The reason we're not going to stop is because we would be denying ourselves the most fun steps in all of miniature painting. Seeing how those little, simple details can make your mini go from eh to ooh. After brightening the teeth and our fleshy little egg sacs with some pure white, I'm going to bring back some depth of color with some selective washes and areas I think would have more color. I keep that Berserker blood shade pretty thin for this step so I can slap it around quickly and not make massive jumps in color value. This will really make the bug feel more alive, as if it has some warmth running under its rubbery hide. And because this model has been painted entirely in warm colors, we can bring in some fun contrast with select use of a cold color. Here, Coelia green shade on select recesses of the pale hide really makes some magic happen. Don't do an all over wash or slop it everywhere, but also don't worry about making mistakes either. This is not about making the perfect paint job. If you're gonna have to replicate this step over 200 individual bugs, you are gonna lose your mind and hate mini painting forever if you make this that painful. And these last detail steps don't take long to do, but they make a massive impact. The glossy carapace, the gooey eggs, and the nasty blood and gore strands reward anyone that takes a closer look at your models on the table. At this point, when I picked up the model and spun it around, I thought the wings looked like they're missing a little something, so I thought I'd add a little bit of blood splatter to them for effect. But apparently my toothbrush appears to be broken because no blood splatter ensued. So instead, I just ripped off a little bit of sponge and give a little irregular splotches all around the wings. One final look around the model, I wasn't entirely in love with how the glossy black carapace really didn't show any of the details in the sculpt. I don't know, maybe now that I think about it, it looks just fine, or maybe it would have looked even better if I would have used black contrast paint to give a little bit of lights and darks across that before the glossy paint. But either way, I decided to test another thing, and you can tell me whether it turned out stupid or great. I put this crusted rust deposits, which is a super matte drying enamel, in the deepest shadows, and then I buffed them off. I kind of think it looks pretty rad, but I don't know, maybe this is a good time to do a couple more in-depth tests. Before I'd start an entire army, I'd probably paint up a couple of different care paste sections in different ways and figure out which one I really like so I can commit to that for the whole thing. And with that, my test scheme, Tyranid, is complete. I think there are a couple of small things I tweak in this scheme and things maybe I do a couple more tests on, but overall, I'm really happy with it. And most importantly, I now have all the steps written down and I feel I could replicate them in an assembly line fashion to knock out an entire army. What about you? Are you planning a new army, a new paint scheme, something for 10th edition 40k? I'm pretty excited about the Leviathan box set, but I don't know exactly what kind of painting videos to do on that monstrosity. If you have any ideas, put them down in the comment section below, and if one tickles my fancy, that's what I'll do. A big thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video. You'd be surprised how many don't have the intestinal fortitude to last this long. Also, a massive thank you to all of my patrons. This is literally the reason why I get to make videos like this is because of your support. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some bugs to build, but before you know it, we'll be back with another video. And sometime between now and then, find some time in your day to slay the gray.